Hey folks, welcome back to The Portable Gamer. Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 and welcome back to the Geiselsberg map. So I did skip ahead, well, I guess one night. It's only the following morning, but without seasons, you know, time is a little, you know, time's a little fluid. So our small field of wheat over here is ready to harvest. We're going to get this going. We have three goals today. One is to get this harvest going, possibly get it done. The second is to get our animals mucked out. And the third is to see whether or not we want to keep that big hook lift trailer. I guess it's a hook lift truck. We could go with a hook lift trailer. Ah, anyway, you'll see when we get over there. Right, so this is least. This is one of the biggest combine harvesters available in game. It's a, th this is available as a base, base game combine. But this happens to be a mod of the same combine. Normally it comes with a gigantic header. I want to say 10 meter, 12 meter. Somebody has been cool enough to make small headers for it. I really like that and I use these a lot. And the reason is sometimes you want a big combine because you've got big fields, but you don't necessarily want the big headers that go with it for your smaller fields. So I feel, I feel like this is a, a perfect sort of compromise to that. We don't really need anything this big right now to begin with at all, but I went ahead and leased it just to, I don't know, just to kind of show you the way that these small headers work. I mean, you know what a small header is. You know all that, but you know what I mean. We are also running manual attaching. I don't know, man. I don't know. I love the concept of manual attaching. Manual attaching is like, I don't know, man. It's like getting a neck tattoo or buying a Fiat. You know, it seems like a fantastic idea until you actually do it. And then it's like, what was I thinking? So, I don't know. We're, we're going to test out manual attaching. We'll see how it goes. And it's, you know, the funny thing about manual attaching is it's made by Wopster. And I believe he's the guy that came up with the dynamic hoses for FS17, maybe even for 15. Oh, point being, he's a very talented modder and code writer. You know, he's, uh, he's legit. So I have every confidence that the manual attaching mod that he makes is, for lack of a better word or for lack of a better phrase, it's as good as it can get. I mean, it's a, it's a tricky ask and uh, it's still problematic. And what that tells me is, you know, if someone that, someone that good at modding, let's square this up a little better. If someone that good at modding finds it difficult to, to make manual attaching do all the things we want it to do, maybe it's a hard thing to do. I just have to wonder. Right, so we're going to go here, and we go here, closer in, here. Oh, come on, manual attaching. Or can we only do this one from in cab? We want to go here, because if we go back in cab, then we do have it. Okay, maybe we can only do this one from inside. And we also have to lift it. Is the PTO hooked up? We'll find out in a second. So let's take a break off and back up. Yeah, this is what I mean. I I like the idea of manual attaching, but in reality, uh, not always. Eh. Right, so put it back in gear. Our neighbors are just going to have to pardon us for being uh, on the road here. I don't see a PTO, although... Although this is a mod header. Hmm. Okay. Let's see if it lets us fire up. And if it does, I don't know. I I'm not married to the idea of keeping keeping manual attaching going. Let me know what you think. Right. Brake is off. And let's see if it lets us fire up here. Sure does. Okay. So we're going to very carefully, carefully at all times. Careful. Try to get lined up a little bit here without running into our neighbor's crop. Alright. Drop that. Get rolling. And after we get rolling, never before, after we get rolling, let's see if we're making swath, and we are. We're going to make some straw bales. And we did, last episode we were doing grass work. Let's slow this cruise control down a little bit and get it set right about there 
Last episode, we were doing grass work. We got 35 silage bales and about 16, maybe 18 hay bales put up. And then I had a few silage bales left over that I took down and sold. I think we got about 23,000 euro. And then I rented this, which was ridiculously expensive to rent. We should have rented something much smaller, but I wanted to show you the those small headers for a big combine. And I also bought a skid steer loader and a bucket. And I'll show you that once we have this on a worker, I'll show you that. I believe, so there's a rumor, as always, a rumor. There's a rumor that there is, I'm reluctant to even call it a bug, but there is a, I don't know, an adjustment perhaps needs to be made that on this map, it is difficult to get the last of the floor food out of the animal stalls. And as a result, you can never get your animals to 100% cleanliness, and therefore you can never get them to 100% productivity. I didn't find that to be the case, but I did find that even though it's an expense, I feel like the most effective thing for cleaning out our animals is going to be a skid steer. I didn't want to spend the 50 grand, but the idea of getting a tractor in there seems a little bit uh, daunting. It does, it's not a good fit. A skid steer is a perfect fit. Um, you know, let's, let's do this a little different. With that little pump house right there, let's just go back around the other way. I feel like this is going to be easier. Even though we have to make a few extra swings, I feel like this is easier in the long run than trying to get lined up. So then we'll drop that and come right in here. Okay. Going good so far. Yeah, this this is... Um, this combine, I know, would be a good fit for these fields across the highway. It'd be perfect for those. But then this this little field right here, if we had one of the big... 10 or 12 meter headers on there it would just be a nightmare so I would like to run this combo as our farm grows so we would have this combine harvester this header for the small fields and then we would just have other bigger headers for those bigger fields I would like to run that combo and I thought I would test it we'll see we'll see how it goes and surprisingly this thing is filling up awfully fast for kind of a small field we're already at 50% so works for me man i like money i like good harvest we have two layers of fert and one layer of lime on this field well i know there can only ever be one layer of lime but it, it counts as a fertilizer buff so it's 30 30 and 30 we're at 190 percent right now or plus 90 however you want to say it and we will get a subsoiler going on this field in between harvests so next crop that we bring in will be a full double harvest full 200 percent so that works also. The reason I want to, I said I want to see if we can get that hook lift truck working. I believe the hook lift truck itself is fine, but that that trailer that we have on it, it's not a trailer, I don't know, grain, grain, I don't know, you, you know what I mean. The, the thing, the attachment we have on there. Oh, well now I guess we'll just, yeah, instead of, mm, okay. I'm gonna go over here, drive over our swath multiple times. Oh, oh, ill will. Feels like a Monday. The the grain body. That's it. That's the word I was looking for. The grain body that we put on our hook lift seems to not want to unload, and it is a mod contest mod. I tend to think of mod contest mods as being like higher quality than regular mods, and so anytime there's a anything i always think well you know that there can't be anything wrong with this it's a mod contest mod but it seems to have some issues when it comes to unloading so i want to test that one more time if it does not work then we may get rid of not only the grain body but the slurry tank and the hook lift trailer the hook lift truck i keep saying trailer the hook lift truck itself as well we'll get rid of everything and then just bring in a regular slurry sprayer, a trailed one. And, I, you know, I wouldn't mind bringing in those uh, MAN farm trucks. I think those would be a good fit for this farm as well because the, the MAN farm truck itself is so tiny and then you can get that great big uh, matching tipper for it, matching trailer that's 
quite large. So I, I feel like when you combine those two, you get the little one up front maneuverability for smaller fields. Feels like this, I think, would be fantastic. But then you can also more than double the volume by hooking that trailer to it, and that would be fantastic for something like the fields across the street uh, on the other side of the highway there. I, you know, my goal was to just put this on a worker and then move on to other things, but it doesn't seem to be working out that way. We're caught on the wood pile. Come on. Come on. There it goes. There it goes. In real life, we would have knocked all that wood over. No. That's not what I wanted. Back up. There you go wanted that yeah in real life we would have knocked that wood pile over and whoever stacked it would have been very very unhappy with us i don't know if you've ever stacked wood it's uh i mean it's not the worst thing but it is it's tedious man it's it's the seems like the perfect combination of uh stoop labor you know bending over to pick things up and carrying things that are kind of heavy and uh getting a ton of splinters so it's fun, is what I'm saying. You'll love it. All right. Um, you know what? Why don't we do this? We're at 93%, and I did want to do things other than harvest today. So why don't we pull this right up here? All right. At the end of this row. Beautiful. We're at 96, 90, 97%. That's about as close to 100 as you can get. We're going to do this. Um, let's do this. I don't know if you would do this in real life. I suppose you could. Let's get our pipe out over the over the road here. And we'll bring our truck right up underneath it. Is that centered just about right? Just about right. Yeah, I don't know if you would do this in real life. I don't know if you ever would. Right. And we're walking. Trying not to run. So we will... We'll hop in our uh, we'll hop in our hook lift. We'll bring it down here and empty, and then we'll finish up by mucking out animals. And I'll show you why I got that skid steer. This farm, man, I'll tell you what. This map, I continue to be nothing but impressed. It's a, it really is a great map. I think we're going to be spending some time on here. You know, the first couple times I played it, I knew I liked it. I think I said this last episode. I knew I liked it, but I didn't think I'd like it this much. I thought I'd be spending most of my time on Greenwich. In fairness, Greenwich is parked at the moment because we're waiting for Seasons. But even after Seasons comes out and we get Greenwich Seasons going, I do want to continue to spend some time on this map. It's that good. It really is. Our grass is growing. This has been... Uh, we've got two fert plus lime on here, so this will be a 200% yield next time. I think I'm going to go just the opposite and... Take silage out of this smaller field and hay out of the other one. And when we combine all that at the end, we should have approximately 70 silage bales and 70 hay bales. Which I think is going to be enough to keep our cows fed for quite a while. And as we start making money and buy more cows, we'll have a little bit more food to throw in there for them. So it's all coming together. I like when you start a map, you really have no idea where it's going to go. You know, it's it all just it all just works out. Oh, also, before I forget, we've got a hayloft barn as well. We've got a hay and I believe straw storage system. We need to get that going too. It's a feature of the map. It's uh, I don't know, maybe a little scripty, maybe a little German scripty, the way German maps are. But we can definitely test that out. Um, I, you know, why, why don't we do that instead of making straw bales? Why don't we, uh, next episode, why don't we get a loading wagon and throw some straw up in the loft? Yeah, let's do that. Right, so we are going to, oh, manual attaching. Stick with me. We are going to take this slurry sprayer off of here, right? And we're going to put this grain body on and we're going to go empty our combine harvester right like so don't clip the garage oh oh close roll this back just a little bit set the brake and let's see what we got here 
Nope. Nope. Is this another one from inside? I'm curious. Some of them are inside. Some of them are outside. Yeah. Okay. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. Just something to figure out so that we can make this all happen kind of seamlessly. You know? We don't want to be experimenting with manual attaching every episode. We want to know how to use it. So, right back here. Right back here. Yep, this one hooks up from inside as well. Make sure we got enough room. Beautiful. Now that looks a lot like a base game grain body, but I know Giants doesn't let you use things that already exist. You need to you need to show that you made it yourself or something. And there are three different sizes available, which is not the case with base games. So I don't know. I mean, I guess the modder built something that looks very much like something that's in base game, which is not... It's not completely nonsensical. There are plenty of mods that are based on real life equipment as base game equipment is so it, it all sort of fits together but it certainly looks like the one of the base game grain bodies right and as always when we have something this big I worry that it's gonna fit under the auger but I think we're gonna be okay I think we are beautiful right so I don't even think there's enough wheat left to put on a worker. So let's do this. Uh... <laughs> so we don't have to walk all the way back to the farm. I'm just going to back this thing up. I hope there's no backup beeper on it because that'll be... That'll be something. Hang on. Oh, there it is. All right. Yeah, we're just going to back up because this is faster than walking and we want to get over to... Oh, dear. That's really not faster than walking. Let's get turned around. This is going from bad to worse. This is a terrible farm sim episode. Ah, uh, man. All right. We're going to bring it together here. You know, if my ultimate net travel time here to get this thing turned around and drive back is exactly the same as if we walked. Oh, don't drive on the neighbor's potatoes. Here we go. And then, of course, off-camera, I'll have to drive this thing back here when we finish up bringing this field in. Yeah, we'll do that next episode. We'll get a loading wagon, and we'll test out the hayloft and see how that all works. Fantastic. Oh, the birds. You know, I don't mind them. I have to say, they're, there's worse things. The dog I never got used to. They did fix the dog eventually. It doesn't spawn on the roof anymore, but... Man, for, <laughs> for all the fanboys that said this game was ready on day one, the dog that spawns on the roof tells me perhaps it was not. Perhaps it was not. Right. So we'll park this right up here. Turn it off. Out we go. And I left. I got a little New Holland skid steer on tracks. And I left it right in here. And we've got some floor food right there. So let's get this thing fired up. Get this thing open up. This is the CSZ models. Get in here, clip through the wall. This is the CSZ models bucket. And there's a bunch of them. This one has the little deployable guard on it. I guess if you want to make sure your floor food doesn't escape, you can cage it. There you go. So let's back out here. We'll drive over to the other side. And this one is not, I mean, comparatively, this one is not tight at all. The one on the other side is very tight, I find. Set the brake. Close the doors. Back in the skid steer. Brake is off. Uh, we can get there this way. Yeah, we can go down this little, this little alley between our roll door barn and our dairy barn right through here and 
right down here. Um, I don't know how we're doing on time. I it's I have a G13 panel. I've got a Logitech G13 panel, and you can set it up so it's got clocks and stopwatches and countdown timers and and I did. So I've got as I'm looking at my G13 panel right now, I've got a, a countdown timer and a stopwatch right next to each other. All I need to do is is tap the button when I start an episode, and it'll tell me exactly how long I've been going. But instead. It's that I don't do that, so I never know how long I've been recording. I always just have to kind of eyeball it. And yet, somehow, very often it works out to be almost exactly 30 minutes. I don't know how or why that is. But so it goes right. Batman. Look at that. That is beautiful. Let's uh, do a little thumbnail. Yeah, let's do a little thumbnail so we're not looking at these cows' asses. There we go. Beautiful. Beautiful. I love it. This is, it really is a good map. It really is. I'm looking forward to uh, Seasons Integration whenever that happens. I have to think fairly soon. Uh, I know there were some Seasons maps, uh, unauthorized conversions available literally the day after Seasons dropped. I don't know how many of those folks had access to uh, literature or documentation that would allow them to make those, those changes to the map before seasons had actually been released. But point being, there were seasons of maps, I would say within 24 hours of seasons being released. So it's not, um, it doesn't seem like you need to reinvent the wheel to get a map converted over. So I assume that just as soon as maps like this one and Greenwich make their way through the Giants testing pipeline, we'll have access to those, yeah. I think a skid steer is about the only thing you can get in here, and even that is, as you can see, pretty, pretty tight. Holy smokes, map maker. I think the skid steer bucket is the narrowest one you can get. Let me get that right down there. Open this up here. Oh, we're having all kinds of problems. All right. And then we get this down here, get the right angle. Not too low, not too high. And we got nothing. I guess this is the this is the problem. People have been talking about. Oh, there's your problem. Oh, it's tight in here, man. Oh, way better. Let's try it now. Oh, fantastic. I wonder if that's what they're talking about. I wonder if that's the uh, if that's what people have been struggling with. I would not have seen that had I not been like right down on it. Right, I uh, can't get out that way. So we seem to have gotten all the floor food up. Wow, it is, it's crazy tight in here. If anybody knows of a custom bucket, a narrow bucket, that would certainly, oh, that would certainly help out in here. Wow, okay. Set the brake. Open the gate. Back in the skid steer. Brake is off. Right out here. Let's call it. Yeah. I don't know. I'll find a place to dump this. It's not... Uh, I'm used to Holzer map that had... Uh, it wasn't floor food that you had to clean up. It was actual manure. But this is floor food. So we'll find a place to drop this. And in the meantime, I think that's going to do it for today. Well, let's call it right there. Yeah, let's do it. Folks, thanks for stopping back to check out the Portable Gamer. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Farming Simulator 19. This is the Geiselsberg map. And we'll see you next time. Take care now.